Hi guys, welcome back. In this video, we are going to look at developing an accordion control uh, using Swift UI. This is actually an update to my old video, which I have uh, created using Swift UI in the beginning of Swift UI. Uh, now, it, now the APIs has been updated. Lots of things has changed. So I thought of making a new video uh, by fixing uh, some of the things and making some improvements uh, to the uh to the accordion control uh so let's see how the uh, app looks like so this is how the app looks like it's basically i have created some data it it is like your uh, typical shopping experience like you have categories insert categories you have subcategories and then products like that so if you see like there are a few categories which can be expanded and which cannot so so if you click on this category it expands and shows the products under it and when you expand it further you have the further sub products and here i have only added like two levels of uh, expansion so so here there is no longer an expansion so if you click this you go to the details so for the categories which doesn't have a uh, disclosure that means it cannot be expanded so if you click you directly go into the details so that's how it is so you, you have this nice animation which shows expansion and collapse as well as indentation to show the level of items so that's that's how the uh, the ui looks like and let's see how it is uh, done so the in in a nutshell uh, how this accordion is controlled is basically using the data it's all data manipulation uh, like insert and deletion of data and manipulating the range so that's actually the basis of this plus all the improvements on swift ui uh, things so let's start with uh, the object or the the model so the model is a it's an identifiable uh, model conforms to the identifiable protocol and observable object so here it has few properties the name then the parent name so name is the one that is that gets displayed and parent name is to just to know like who is the parent of that and the level so level determines the indentation like which level it is the top second or third and then the children children is again the same object which is an array of the same generic object so these are just uh, enums to identify what what is the type i'm not actually using it right now the 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 properties which is more important is like the name parent name uh, can be expanded and is expanded which uh, determines whether the uh, the uh, data is already expanded or not and whether it can be expanded so that's all uh, with the the object then comes uh, the data store so data store is the uh, the class which manipulates or which does all the logical operations here so here you can see i have defined number of categories and number of children's per uh, category or per product so here I have uh, when you initialize I have created it as a shared instance so whenever this instance is created I am just creating a test data so like I am randomly creating the category object and randomly assigning whether uh, it can be expanded or not so this is this is the first level that you see when you open the app you will be seeing this list which displays the categories now i have some convenience functions so one is like fetch children for parent and expand this happens like when you click on a expandable category what it does is it loops through uh, it creates children like if it if the parent object properties can be expanded then the parent the object is marked as is expanded and then it creates random uh, number of children or like not random like uh, 10 
children and adds into the data row so this data row is a, a published property so whenever data gets added uh, to this data row or removed from this data row uh, and even gets fired it notifies the ui so the ui gets refreshed so uh, so these functions just creates uh, the children and adds into the uh, into the array so that's what uh, basically it happens so uh, for any children uh, to be added you just find the range or the index of the parent and below that index you just insert that many uh, products so that's what is happening here when you try to expand now when you click on an expanded uh, row what happens is we find out uh, the which which of the index of the row which has been tabbed and then we recursively loop through the children and just remove the sub range we do not remove the uh, uh, remove the children from the object itself we just remove the children from the uh, data row so it's kind of we are doing the flattening and deflattening operation so we will remove the sub range and we mark the object expanded as false so that's uh, basically happening here so that's those those are the two functions which actually manipulates the whole event so whenever the data uh, data is being expanded or collapse uh, the data is being inserted or either uh, removed from the data row and based on that the event is fired to this ui and ui gets updated accordingly so that's all uh, with that and when you see when you come to the ui so ui is just a normal uh, list view so here you have the data store as an observed object and uh, you have a navigation view inside the navigation view we have a list uh, which listens to this data store dot data rows and you have a data row so like if you look at data row it, which you can uh, compare as your table view cell or something similar to that so here uh, you have this uh, um, this object which we which is being passed from the list so here we will check like uh, we will display the name and if the data row is expanded then we will show the chevron uh, like the down arrow like this and if it is uh, not expanded uh, or it can be expanded we show the right icon and if both is not there that means if it cannot be expanded or if it is not already expanded you don't show anything so that's how it is and this is just to set the frame of the row and this is where the indentation comes in so you check the level and then just multiply with with a random number to have that padding there and uh, this this i will come to it a bit later this is just to solve some of the issues which i will uh, come to it later now going back to the list so here we create the data row and so this is this is where some uh, something which is being done differently so when you add a navigation view typically if you want to go to a details you you will be implementing the navigation link so the problem with navigation link is like you cannot manage uh, say for example if i add navigation link for everything the moment when you tap on this category it navigates to a detail screen which we do not want because there is no detail uh, there so to avoid that i in implemented this on tap gesture so when uh, someone taps on this uh, data row uh, you do the expansion and collapse and this is one approach i found uh, like you can create a navigation link uh, so here i added a, a fake or, or you say like a empty view background to the whole uh, data row and which has a navigation link and you can see the initializer is a bit different with the selection property so if you look at uh, that it says like this instance gets created once a selection is set to a tag so that means once a selection is made uh, 
then this uh, navigation link gets created and add added so so what it means like so this way you can uh, control uh, the way we navigate to the details page so when you normally click on on tap gesture so i will check like this selected item id is assigned only if uh, the data cannot be expanded that means you are on the last stage or you are on the uh, stage where you can only go to the details and in this case i am not setting it so that means this link won't be available and uh, yeah and i don't want any tap to happen on this empty view so by default uh, this is being disabled so that only on tap gesture drives it and this animation uh, show shows this this nice animation of insert and this ui changes so that's how like if you don't use this background approach it will be very hard for you to uh, manage the navigation to the detail with this approach but so far it's it work it worked well then the other uh, issue that i faced was like if you don't have this background color added to this data row your tab gesture applies only to the contents which is shown like either the category or the chevron because in between these two there is a spacer and uh, due to some reason the spacer doesn't take tab gesture so i have to add this background and this background changes based on uh, the theme like if it is dark theme uh, it will take the like the dark background and if it is a uh, light theme it will take white so that way i managed to solve uh, these issues and one more other thing other issue which i found was like uh, if you don't add the this object which is inside the data row as also an observable object what happens basically is if i if you expand uh, the data rows some of the rows gets inserted into the data row that means only insert and remove triggers a ui update and only the changed data is being uh, uh, refreshed in the ui so that means what happens is i don't get the chevron to uh, show the open state if i don't make this generic object also as a published uh, property so just to demonstrate that so i just removed this expanded uh, as a i just removed the published uh, property so if you now try to expand you can see that this chevron didn't change it's because uh, it only recognizes the data is being inserted or removed in the data rows it doesn't uh, recognize the change of this object inside because nothing is being notified so you need to have that in place so that this should work fine so yeah so that's all so i'll post the link to the code in the description and yeah that's all thanks for watching bye bye